Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Again, if you want help with your letter of intent, go to residency.teachable.com and you can see uh, some of the freebies there. And then uh, if you want to go to residencyhelp.com, I still have that website up. Uh, but both ways, uh, you can uh, contact me and uh, see if helping with your letter of intent is something you want. Uh, so whether you call it good news or bad news, uh, it's probably where you are. Um, but uh, the number of applicants uh, coming into pharmacy schools is uh, quite a bit lower uh, than it was before, down about 20% uh, as compared to last year. And uh, one of the big things that's a change is the change in early decision. So there will be no early decision in the 21-22 cycle, uh, but still about half, maybe 60 schools or so, uh, is going to have early decision this year. Uh, and the idea is that if you don't have early decision, then students have much longer to make their decisions. And when I say longer, I mean a lot longer. Uh, so if you talk about the entirety of you know the schools, uh, over 50 schools have a deadline that's all the way out in June. Uh, then you know you take April, May, you've got another you know 40 schools. Uh, and then you put January, February, March together, another 40 schools, and only 11 schools are daring to put their deadline before January of next year. And uh, there still may be a change to that because July uh, is uh, something that the schools did last year, and they took uh, July, I think, first was the final date that you could apply, which I think what actually happened was students that were so on top of things actually probably got into pharmacy school a year earlier than they were actually planning to uh, instead of going a year later. Uh, so I don't think they got the very last applicants. I think they actually got the very first applicants. So I think that's going to actually, those four or 500, I think there were about 500 applications, 400 applicants. Uh, I think that's actually going to cannibalize the beginning of this year. Uh, and I think that might be part of it. So I don't know that schools are going to be down another 20% this year. Uh, it looked like it was around 20% at the end of last year. But uh, without those uh, numbers at the end of the year and without knowing the quality of those students, so were those students uh, very last minute students or were those students that were way on top of their game? And the misconception is that it's going to be evenly dispersed. That is, uh, all of the schools go down 15, 20%. Uh, some schools will have just a small decline, and some schools will have a very, very significant decline. And the more reliant the school is on solely a PharmD program, the more trouble they're going to be in. Uh, and the less reliant they are on that PharmD program, the better off they're going to be. So uh, you may see other programs, uh, health programs usually, that pop up and uh, some other majors. Uh, but again, this is the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. So uh, what effect is this going to have on us? Uh, so as residents or future residents, uh, what it's going to mean is uh, certainly uh, as the Bureau of Labor Statistics has said, you know, there's going to be, uh, I think it was 13,000 fewer jobs uh, rather than uh, zero. And so just a small percentage decrease uh, over the next 10 years. I think this is going to alleviate some of that, but uh, it's going to be a long time before it actually happens. And we still don't know what the percentages are for last year. So uh, did the schools increase to 85% or did they actually uh, maybe go down to 80%? Uh, what is, you know, how many uh, students are being uh, accepted? Uh, so for the meantime, uh, for these two or three years, uh, I don't think it's going to have any effect. I think they're going to be a few more residency programs, but significantly more residency applicants as uh, some doors are shut as the BLS is projecting uh, retail, which is generally the first place that uh, we see uh, students going, uh, is not an option. And so they're going to say, okay, well, I wasn't really planning on that, but now maybe I'll do a community residency or I'll try for a hospital residency. But uh, if you don't have either the APPE is in place for a hospital residency or you don't have hospital work experience, uh, it's very difficult uh, to get a hospital residency and make that transition uh, that late in the game. And my concern is always that students are always a little too positive in that they're saying, well, it's a 50-50 shot. And as I talked about in other podcast episodes, it's absolutely not a 50-50 shot. Uh, it may be for some schools, 
but for some schools, it's 80-20 on the positive side. On the other side, it's 20-80. So the first thing you really want to do is, you know, look at your stats for your school and just say, you know, it is what it is. I can't change what school I'm going to, although some people have made the move this year uh, because of the accreditation issues with uh, one of the schools uh, recently, and they were able to get some uh, free classes and uh, get into another school, uh, I think at a sort of a discount, not a huge discount, uh, but some discount, uh, and they were able to make the transition to a school that maintains their accreditation. Uh, I don't know the how many students that happened to. I don't know uh, you know what's left in that class. Uh, the numbers won't come out till probably late fall. Uh, but for now, you know what I think that you need to do is uh, work on the things that you can affect and the work you can work on, which is uh, make sure you have a great relationship with your APPE preceptors. Make sure you're asking, is there something that I could be doing uh, more? Uh, how do I compare to other students? Uh, would you be able to write a recommendation that checks the top box, highly recommend? Uh, and then, you know, getting those letters of intent, not just because you're going to have this thing to do, but really a letter of intent is a reflection on, okay, well, what am I going to do? And when you start to write it, you realize, I really haven't thought this through because you may have a favorite site that you want to go to. And then you look at your letter of intent and you see, well, wait a minute, I don't match this site at all. So one of the two things has to happen. Either your experiences need to change so that you fit the site, or that's not really the site for you. And you see really quickly that there isn't a match. So again, the, the templates I have at residency.teachable.com are uh, able to allow you to do the self-reflection. But the reason that I didn't put the second half of what you need to do for the letter of intent is because there are 4,000 different options as to where you're going to go. So... Again, if you need help one-on-one, -on -one, I'm happy to help you. And then I have uh, many free resources for you. But uh, although PharmD programs are down 20%, uh, I don't see any mass school closings because uh, I've seen schools and pharmacy deans very smart uh, that they are diversifying and the PharmD program is a smaller part of their portfolio. And what's coming up usually are adult completion master's programs, uh, whether in entrepreneurship or um, cannabis or uh, some other things, or their other health professions programs. So for the, for the time being, I'm still projecting that there will be an increase in the number of applicants, a decrease, a smaller increase in the number of sites. So it's an effective uh, gap that's going to widen uh, as we look at uh, residency. And then, you know, are we pumping out residents way faster than uh, we have the need for? Because we have been adding the growth of residency sites has been almost three, 400 a year, which is 10% growth year over year. And that's a ton. So again, if you need help with your letter of intent, I'm happy to help you one-on-one. -on -one. If you just want to look at the stuff, uh, you can look at residencyhelp.com or residency.teachable.com. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, that'll get you on the path to figuring out where you're going to go. But currently, uh, the volume for pharmacy schools is down maybe 20% in the PharmD programs. But I don't see that it's going to help anybody for the next two, three, maybe four years at most.